I've always loved um, stories because my mom always um, tell me nighttime story and sometimes like she'll take a classic tale sometimes she'll actually make up her own story and she always stopped at you know the cliffhanger so like when things getting really exciting she'll stop and then she'll be like try to think about you know how that's gonna happen next with your own imagination So I think that also come into part of my childhood, why um, I love stories so much and I love creating stories. Um, so eventually I just started drawing, making characters, making environments. Um, our family were not very well off when I was a kid. So there are a lot of places I've seen on TV, but I've never been, you know, like I've never seen snow before but I'll see it on TV and I can draw it, you know. I'll have characters that I will reuse in my drawings. Those are like my imaginary friends and will go to places that, you know, in reality, I wasn't able to go. So that's the start of drawing. And I think looking back, it makes sense, like why I eventually went into illustration. Um, so when I was growing up, my parents um, had really long work hour. My mom was an editor at a newspaper, and as a publisher, you know that the schedule is crazy. Um, but her boss was really nice, so she was able to take me to work with her. So I would just sit across from her at the desk and do my homework. And after homework, you know, during that time, there's no iPad, there's no like Switch, no Nintendo. Um, what was lying around was only, you know, pen and paper. So that's all I had as toys as a kid. And I think that's something really valuable as kids. Like you see them, you know, in the playground with a stick. They can imagine it as a gun, um, as a sword. Any like really ordinary or very um, normal things to adult, somehow they can create it and then make it into something fascinating you know, in their imaginary world. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, I'm very glad I was, you know, in the time before all this technology came because I'm sure if I had computer, it would be much easier to entertain, to be passively, you know, let along in the game or in the video than trying to figure out like how I can spend this, you know, four extra hours in this office space. Mm -hmm. So what I did, you know, eventually was figure out I can tell story to myself. Um, like when I went to Bristy, um, my first choice was actually graphic design because, you know, like, from Asia, you heard about fashion design, you heard about graphic design, you heard about painting, that's it, yeah. that's it. Mm -hmm. um, never heard about illustration, don't know how you can, you know, earn a living with illustration. But after I went into graphic design for maybe just a couple of classes, I realized it's, it's just about type more, about layout. Um, and then I, I saw a presentation by the illustration department once it's like, wow, that's pretty much what I've been doing my whole life. And at that point, just, you know, everything seems to make sense. It definitely took a while. Um, I mean, when you were just drawing for fun as a kid, you don't think about style, you don't think about how it will market, all those things. Um, you just draw your natural way, whatever is fun. But then after I got into college and you know sort of have my first real um, formal training as an artist you you get exposed to all this you know like knowledge history um new influences so for a while i got pretty lost um especially you know when you're working for a class it's assignment assignment every week and you sort of got carried away by the assignment let them dictate you know what you do rather than what you 
love to do, what you are interested in. Um, so I struggled a lot during college, you know, trying to find my own voice. And at some point, like, I got pretty depressed because it wasn't fun anymore. Like, drawing wasn't fun anymore. It, it was just like, you know, the day before um, class, the deadline, like, how, how do I make something up? How do I fill this blank page? So then, you know, I won't have a hard time during the critique the next day. And that was definitely unhealthy. Um, and I wasn't doing very well in class until uh, one day my teacher, Chris Vazelli, and his painting is handing oh. up there, the, the skull piece. Mm -hmm. um, he, we were just working at our desk. He came by and then he looked at my sketchbook. I kept a sketchbook just as doodling as I always do as a kid. Um, mm -hmm. And I will, you know, draw during liberal art class, like art history or English class, that's more boring. Mm -hmm. And he, he checked it out and he was like, like, how come you don't do this kind of stuff for your awesome. class assignment? Like, this is much more interesting, you know, it has a unique voice of yours instead of, you know, trying to be someone else. And I think that was a, a big moment for me to realize, like, like admiring other artists doesn't mean that I have to be other artists. And looking at professional work, like their style doesn't define the professionalism. Mm -hmm. They're working, they're being hired to do their work. That's why they're professional. What I should focus on is, instead of trying to look professional is how to make why I got into drawing in the first place into something that could be professional. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a small thing, but it was a total switch of mindset. So after that, I just, you know, sort of put everything, you know, to the background, you know, the class assignment, worrying about the grade, if the classmates gonna like it, is it gonna look like, you know, a proper illustration, all those, stop worrying about that and, you know, get back to the basic. The, the really ground zero of, you know, why I started drawing and why I decided to apply to art school. And that's the reason, you know, I love doing it. So I have to remember, you know, how to love it again. Um, that took a while, mm -hmm. but eventually, you know, I'm getting back on track. So they're in layers, so like this, that was the sketch blown up. Yeah, and I put it on the light box, so then you know, I know where to draw stuff. So sketch is usually, you know, rough, it's just the composition. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I got to the drawing, I really got into the details. And there are times I, you know, mess up and I just correct it because this is not the final. Mm -hmm. So this is the little fox piece, but in the middle. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with the other layer is separate because I need to color it differently when I scan it into you know, the computer. Mm -hmm. But I have to show the client. I can't show this. So oh, yeah. like you know, go on second round and then third round, which is you know understandable for other people. And then for this one. That's the final. Yep, they picked this one. Um, so the prophecy is a new line of wine. Right now they have six labels. I did all of them, and they're based on tarot cards. For me, like what mesmer mesmerized me the most about illustration is being able to capture the essence of a story in one frame. Um, by saying that, I don't mean like you're able to explain, you know, tell the whole backstory like a movie or like a, like a comic book, but you're able to give that taste and that taste sort of is a window that maybe lead you into 
reading, you know, the article that I illustrated, the story I illustrated. So I think for me, it's very interesting to pick, you know, which moment to illustrate and what composition, what colors, what mood, what little Easter egg you hide into it, you know, what kind of detail, how you eventually bring this thing together into a, a window, you know, for people to get curious. Or, you know, you read the story and then you come back, you discover something different. Um, so I definitely see illustration as an interactive mm. thing. I, I look at I look at your website. And oh yeah. I actually did a bit of research before mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let's do this. Um, because honestly, there are a lot of, you know, like art blogs or design blogs or magazine who sort of do interviews with artists and things like that. But I really feel like you guys put a lot of thought, you know, into featuring each artist and. Mm -hmm. It's very special you dedicate, you know, one issue to one person. So then I, I, I noticed that with the design and layout, you know, even the film, like I look at the film and each film is different, you know, rather than, okay, this is what we do and we just apply this, you know, cookie cutter mm -hmm. um, policy to everyone. It feels like, you know, you were really trying to be honest, you know, to the to the person. You're treating them as a living thing, you know, rather than a, like a commodity to be consumed. Like, I feel like now a lot of times with, especially the internet, you know, with the Tumblr, Instagram, mm -hmm. like art is just very fast consumption. Yeah. Um, and to me, what you guys are doing is something I haven't seen before. Um, that's why, like, I, I'm very happy to be, you Thank know, you. <laughs> collaborating with you guys. Um, you know, like, uh, it, I'm, I'm really glad it's able to work out because the time, like, um, we got in the emails a little bit, like, last minute. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like it was, a, you know, very rare opportunity that you guys come all the way to LA. So, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah.